we'll go for the little value bet on Negreanu in this case. Now, <laughs> if you bet on Negreanu and lose, don't blame me. I'm just giving you the math here. Hello everyone, I'm Jonathan Little, and today I am going to tell you who I am betting on in the Doug Polk versus Daniel Negreanu Heads Up Challenge to see who the best Heads Up Texas style no limit card game player in the whole world is. So let's do some math. First things first, what is the challenge we are actually playing? And I think the rules are not 100% clearly laid out, the players are still figuring it out, but we're going to go through a few potential rule sets and see how that impacts the game. The most important thing though is pretty much the number of hands that are going to be played. I believe Polk and Negreanu have agreed to play between 10,000 and 25,000 hands, but that is a pretty big spread. We're going to look at both of those. And then you also want to ask, what is the win rate of the winning player and the loss rate of the losing player? I think we have to presume Doug Polk is going to be a solid winner in this game because Doug Polk has spent the vast majority of his poker career playing heads up, no limit hold'em cash games, 100 big blinds deep. Whereas Daniel Negreanu has spent the vast majority of his poker career playing mixed games and no limit hold'em tournaments. Very, very different games, right? So I think it's pretty clear that Negreanu will probably be an underdog to Doug Polk in the actual game. However, us as spectators, we have the opportunity to bet on this. There are betting lines for this type of thing. And currently, Daniel Negreanu is about a 5 to 1 underdog. So what that means is whenever you're betting, you have to bet one unit to get back a total of six. So I'm, it's 5 to 1 odds. I'm betting one to win a total of six. You do one divided by six, which means if you want to bet on Negreanu, you think that he's going to win 17% of the time or more over the course of the entire challenge. Alternatively, if you're betting on Polk, you think he is going to win... 83% of the time or more, okay? So there's a website called primedope.com. I don't really know what's going on with the site. I'm not affiliated with it in any way, but they have a poker variance calculator there. They also have a bunch of other analytical tools. And we can use this to look at various simulations that will show how often each player will be up or down over the course of some number of hands. So. First things first, we need to know win rate in terms of big blinds per 100, which this is going to be Doug Polk's win rate, right? Because we're presuming he is the winning player in the game. Let's presume, well, first things first, I want to make this clear. I am not a professional heads up, no limit hold'em player. I have relatively little experience. I've mostly only played sit and goes. I do know that these players are playing um, 100 big blind deep cash games. I believe they top up if they get down. I don't know if they top down if they get up. But I guess we'll see. Um, maybe we'll find that one player has a big advantage if they happen to be playing deeper stacked. I'm not sure. But I do know that typical losing players in the high stakes heads up games are losing between like one big blind per hundred and five big blinds per hundred. Now, look, I have no clue how good or bad Daniel Negreanu is at heads up no limit hold'em. But I know he's going to try his best. I know he's going to study. I know he's going to use his resources to do his absolute best in this. I do not expect him to come into this game being just like really, really bad at heads up, no limit hold'em. It's not going to happen. So we're going to look at what's going to happen if he's losing at 2.5 big blinds per 100. And then later we'll look at what's happening if he's losing at five big blinds per 100 and maybe even more to the point where we'll, we will determine when you should no longer be betting on the big underdog here. So win rate, let's start at 2.5 big blinds per 100 for Doug Polk. Standard deviation in heads up, no limit hold'em. I think it ranges between about 125 and 200, uh, depending on how high of a variance of a style the players are playing. We'll, we'll, we'll experiment with this too. We'll tinker with it. And then number of hands to simulate. Um, the more hands we play, the more often the winning player is going to win over that sample size. So in theory, Negreanu should want to play as few hands as possible, which makes sense, right? If they play one hand, it's basically a coin flip, right? But if they play a billion hands, whoever's the favorite is going to win basically every time. So let's take a look at this. Let's just assume 2.5 big blind win rate for Doug Polk, standard deviation, 150, number of hands to simulate, 25,000. We click calculate, and then this program actually runs 20 samples, and it shows how often each sample was up or down. The break-even line is actually right here. It's this thin black line, kind of down the middle. 
Don't know if you can see it. It's very, very thin. Uh, and then there are a few other lines you can go through here and tell what these are. But essentially, if you look at this random sample, it looks like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. This is actually a pretty good sample for uh, Negranu. Uh, anytime it's below the break-even line means that Negranu won. Anytime it's above the break-even line means Polk won. But this doesn't really matter all that much. What really matters down here is the variance in numbers section. What we really care about is the probability of loss after 25,000 hands. This shows how often Doug Polk will be down after 25,000 hands. And in this case, it's 39%. And remember, he needs to win 83% of the time or more for him to be a good bet. Notice here that he's going to be up 60% of the time, which means that in this scenario, if these assumptions are correct, down to Gran, who's a you know, small losing player, over 25,000 hands, this would make Negranu an easy bet, even though he's going to lose 60% of the time, right? 40% of the time he's going to win, and you only need him to win 18% of the time or more, or 17%. So clearly 40 is way more than 17%. So if this assumption is correct, this makes Negranu a very, very easy bet. Now, again, let me show you if, if we're playing fewer hands. I think they're going to play 25,000 hands, though. Scroll down a little bit. You see now it's even better for Negranu, right? Now he's going to lose 56% uh, of the time, and Polk's going to lose 43% of the time. So fewer hands is clearly better for Negranu. All right, let's now presume Negranu's worse at poker. Let's say now he's going to lose at five big blinds per 100. Click Calculate. Scroll down again. You see now he's going to lose 37 10,000? Oh, sorry. This is over 10,000 hands. I want to look at 25,000 mostly because I do think they are going to play the full 25,000 hands. Um, so now you see Negranu is going to lose 30, 70% uh, of the time and Polk's going to win 70% of the time, right? So now it's still a bet on Negranu. So if Negranu is actually not particularly great at heads up no limit hold'em with him losing at five big blinds per 100, assuming these other numbers are accurate, you see that he's still going to win 30% of the time, which is substantially more than 17, right? So if he's kind of bad at no limit hold'em, he's still a bet. Now, let's actually tinker around here with the uh, standard deviation. If the standard deviation is especially low for some reason, that's going to make it better for Polk because there'd be fewer swings. You see now Negranu's going to win only 21% of the time, but again, still a bet on Negranu, right? It's a marginally profitable bet, though. Uh, what if the standard deviation is high? This is going to be better for Negranu. You see now he's winning 34% of the time, right? Okay, what happens if Negranu's terrible? Let's say he's going to lose at 7.5. Big blinds per 100 with 150 standard deviation. You see now he's going to win 21% of the time. But again, still, if you want to make a profitable bet, you would still bet on Negranu. So that means that the betting market essentially thinks Negranu is like really bad. Is Negranu really bad at heads up no limit hold'em? And I have a hard time thinking he's gonna be really bad at anything he's gonna actually devote himself to, and I think he actually is doing it. So if he is a 10 big blind per 100 hand loser, you see now it becomes a bet on Polk because now Negranu needs to win 17% for him to be bet. Now he's like 14.5%. So at that point, it would become a bet on Doug Polk. So, the question is, really, how prepared can Daniel Negranu get to play Heads Up No Limit Hold'em against one of the best Heads Up No Limit Hold'em players in the world playing their game of choice? And I don't know. That's, that's, really, the, that's really the question, right? I have to think that Daniel Negranu is going to get pretty good at No Limit Hold'em in a short period of time. I mean, he did this back in the day. I don't know if anyone remembers this, where he used to play on Poker Stars. He would play, uh, I think it was 100, 200, no limit hold'em, and he was kind of losing for a decent amount of the time. And I don't think he liked losing for a decent amount of the time. So he sat down, he studied, and he got pretty good to the point where I think he was actually beating the games. And I know, it's pretty clear, Doug Polk and Dale Negron, who don't especially enjoy each other's company. And I have to think that if I was in Negron's shoes and I somehow took a challenge against someone who I really did not like and I really wanted to beat them, I would basically be devoting all of my time to it. And I got to think Negranu is going to be doing that too. So how good can he get in two or three months? I think he can actually get pretty decent. Um, like I said, I think he's going to be a reasonable underdog to Doug Polk. 
But I think given the betting lines, I actually think we're probably looking at more like minus, I don't know, let's say minus three big blinds per hundred, maybe minus five, somewhere in there. So that's going to have him winning this uh, 37% of the time, give or take. So given that, I just showed you that the absolute worst case scenario, in my mind, if he's losing at 10, is it's a small losing bet if you bet on Negreanu. But if it's not a small losing bet, it's like a big winning bet, right? So in that case, anytime you're looking at making a bet, if the options are you either lose a little bit or you win a ton, you should probably be pretty happy with that. Also, don't forget, there's like some world where Negreanu's actually like really good at heads up, no limit hold him. Maybe he um, finds some like good GTO solver to play against and practice and he gets becomes like a sicko at it. And if that's the case, then it's like 50-50, right? Then obviously getting five to one on a 50-50 bet, you're just crushing. Now, you have to understand when you are making bets on substantial underdogs, if the betting line is correct, then you know, you're only going to win 18% of the time, give or take, which is not all that often, which means you're going to have a lot of variance in your bet. So don't go betting your whole bankroll on it. Um, full disclosure, I have about $3,000 bet on Daniel Negreanu at the moment at about five to one. Um, probably not going to take a whole lot more action on it because, you know, just like nice little rooting, nice little uh, sweat. But I do think he's going to be the profitable bet. Um, if I thought Negreanu was like taking, not, not taking this seriously, or if I thought um, he was just like really bad at no limit hold him, then I think betting on Doug Polk would be right. And it's, it's an interesting thing because like Doug Polk clearly is a very, very world-class heads up player, right? And I don't think he's going to be like rusty at all. I know he hasn't really played a ton of poker lately, but I don't expect him to just like come back and not know how to play. You're going to find that if you know how to play poker decently well, you can take a little time off, come back, play a bit ahead of time like he said he is, and he's going to be perfectly fine. So I, I definitely think that we're looking at a scenario kind of like this, maybe a little bit worse. Maybe he's a five big blind per 100 loser. But again, if he's a five big blind per 100 loser, you see he's still going to win 30% of the time. 30% is a whole lot more than uh, 17%. So we'll go for the little value bet on Negreanu in this case. Now, <laughs> if you bet on Negreanu and lose, don't blame me. I'm just giving you the math here. And um, yeah, that's that. I'm excited to watch this match. I'm going to be going a few, going through some of the big hands. Um, also, we have some heads up content for you. We also have uh, pre-flop heads up GTO charts. So you can see the strategies that these players may or may not be using. You can click on the link below this video to get those charts. They're completely free for you. And I'm um, excited to watch the show. Good luck in your games. Have fun. Let me know in the comment section. If you're betting, who are you betting on? And if you're not betting, who would you be betting on? Because we'll see if it, if it comes out 83% uh, Polk and 17% Negreanu. Good luck in your games. Have fun. Enjoy the show. And I'll talk to you next time.